Okay, so here we are with episode number six. How's everybody doing? Uh, we're going to uh, today. We're going to uh, concentrate on water. So we're going to put some water in the cavity block and in the core block. We'll uh, utilize some bubblers and some circuit type water as well. Uh, we'll go through on how to put in uh, how to put in those bubblers and how it's how automated it all is. So let's start off with kind of having a look at the design and see if everything that we see in the design meets what we need for water. So the one thing I see is our eye bolts and our core block are maybe a little bit high. We could probably lower those a little bit. So we're going to use uh, some, some modify move commands. So once again, this goes back to a past tutorial where we can grab components and by saying group, uh, it will select all those eye bolts in the core block for me and move them to the same height. Okay. So there, now we have all our core block eye bolts moved down. So that's a better location, it's going to give us a little more room for our water. Um, so the next thing to do is decide what size water lines we want. Based on this size tool, I'm going to say 3 8 MPT water lines are going to probably be pretty good. So in our config file, we're able to set by default what type of water line sizes and, and the, the configuration of our water lines, how we want them to go in by default. But the situations aren't always the same. Uh, maybe you do a different size tool than what you normally would do and whatnot. And so you might need to change that. So what I want to do, just to kind of show you, is if you go into our water function here, and we have our water options. And under our water options, we're able to set everything defaulting to whatever we want. So here I do have it set to 3 8 so that's perfect. Um, and right now it's set the pipe plug. So when I put a water line in, it automatically puts the pipe plug on the end for me. Um, in this case, for the cavity side, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it so it's a pipe tab, so there's no pipe plug. And I'm going to have it put our Jiffy Quick Connect on there automatically. And I'm going to also have it put the counter bore on automatically. So this way when I place this water, just kind of automatically, mostly everything I need is there. And away I go. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So as I mentioned, it's the cavity side that I'm concerned with at the moment. So that's what I'm going to work on first. Now, I, once again, just as just like every other feature in XMD, this can be done in 2D or 3D. Right now I have my 3D pulled up, but I can do it either way. So whatever's most comfortable for you, that's how you can do it. Uh, one real good tip is if your water is very, very complicated, what you can do is space the water out with this feature I'm about to use. And then you can cut sections using using the, the uh, section editor, which we got it in a couple of uh, episodes ago that we went through. You can go ahead and put in some sections through those water lines and those can be just for construction. So you can go in there, kind of draw in your water lines in 2D because it's really easy because you can see the shape of the part real easy. Draw your, draw in your water lines and when you're done you can delete all those sections. You don't need to keep them. So uh, there's a lot of ways you can do water. Uh, we're going to do everything pretty much in 3D in this case. So we're going to go ahead and say auto, auto through water. And we're going to put that water in the cavity block. and Basically what this is going to do is it's going to find our spacing of our water for us and kind of follow the shape of the part. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to start with the water, we're going to keep it three quarters of an inch away from the part, you can do whatever values you want. Um, our spacing between the water lines, let's go a little closer than three, let's go two and a half inches. And how close do we want to allow it to get to the sprue bush? Well, I'm okay with it getting very close to that, let's go about three eighths of an inch to that sprue bush. Our other two options are true and projected. So this is, we're treating this as a production tool. So I want to do true. I want that two and a half inches to be based on the shape of the part, not based on looking in the plan view. So this projected is a really, really useful tool for people doing prototyping. So prototyping, they might say, oh, every six inches or seven inches, depending on how big the tooling is, and they can punch it all in that way. So you, you have options. Once again, we provide as much flexibility as possible. So we're going to go ahead and say OK, and XMD is going to figure out the spacing of the water for us, and it's going to follow the shape of the part. So we're able to utilize the spacing it gives us, or we can always tweak some of these water lines. If we see some things that we need to shift a little bit, or we need to add a line here or whatnot, we can do that. Okay? We have total control. So for example, um, if I want to maybe get a line a little bit closer down here, I can do that. So I'll take this line, and I'm going to add one down here. So now I want to kind of increase my spacing a little bit here. So I can just kind of take this water line and maybe move it, you know, just a little bit over. Once again, I'm using my snap to ensure that my spacing is uh, all nominal values. And then I have a pretty decent looking, pretty decent looking and evenly spaced out water circuit. Let's go to this, this way. There we go. Okay. 
So I added one extra line in there from what it originally gave me. So now I have a nice, nice spacing. It looks good. Now, the one thing I do have though is it is pretty high in this area. So I probably want to go with some bubblers in that area. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off everything else and just turn on our cavity block. Okay. Right. And I'm going to go gonna look down into a plan view here and just kind of have a look. So this is the kind of the high area of my part. So maybe I'm going to want to start off with some bubblers maybe in this area. And I'm going to want bubblers to go really all the way across here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our bubbler command. So if I go here to the water and I select, as you can see, we have many, many, many features. We're just going to run through a few of the basic ones. So we're going to go ahead and add some bubblers. So these bubblers are going in the cavity block and automatically XMD will snap to the center of the water lines for me. So now I can go ahead and place these bubblers right into the water lines. Once I'm done placing these bubblers, then what I'll do is I'll make a mirror copy them over below the line. So if I go to a side view, I can see that bubbler looks really good. Pretty happy with that. Um, now if, if you really had a customer that really wanted you to be really, really consistent with your cooling, you may need to actually put them on that five degree angle. And if you go to the modify move commands, we have this tip feature. That's so what I can do is I can actually pick a bubbler and I can actually tip it. All right, so say I did tip this one water line, I tip it to say over here, I'm just gonna use a value just so it stands out. You can see it automatically puts a spot face in for us. So it takes care of all that for us automatically. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. I'm okay with, with the vertical lines as it is. Um, this customer is kind of more concerned about uh, simple, simple uh, gun drilling. They don't have a five axis gun drill or whatnot. So now I'm gonna go ahead from there and I'm gonna uh, mirror copy these bubblers over. Mirror copies above this line. There you go. So now I have a nice cavity circuit, cavity set of water, all going in and out, in and out, in and out. So there's my cavity water. So from there now, what we wanna do is move on to the core. So the core, we got a little bit more going on. As you can see, we have we got ejector pins, we got screws, we got the lifter, and we have this this height where the, where the block is standing. So a customer has kind of made a request to do the water a very specific way, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow what they want. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off with doing something very similar to the water we just did. We're going to do some through water, okay. but I'm going to this time instead of it spacing it automatically for me, I'm going to manually place it. And I'm going to sh just to kind of show you how easy placing it even manually in XMD is. So I'm going to tell it I want a water line here. And I want another water line in between this screw and this ejector pin. So we're going to stick one right here. Okay. And we want another one here. And we'll throw maybe another one here. Okay. So if I turn on my core block and I make sure I show components, because right now I don't have all the components shown, you can see all the fittings are in there, everything's all complete. Now I've just made a decision though, maybe I don't really like that height of, maybe I want to bring them down here, I'll show you why in a little bit. So I can go ahead and move them down. And remember, when, when we were talking before about the vertical move, what's really nice about it is I can pick, I can pick at the center of this line to ensure that this line moves down. I'm using a vertical command, so no matter where I place my cursor, it still only goes straight up and down. I'm going to move them all up another eighth of an inch. I want to be a little further from that eye bolt. Okay. And then uh, we'll move these other uh, these other two down as well. Okay. So it's very easy to move and manipulate and reorganize the way your circuits look. So our next our next uh, situation is up in here. And the customer has asked us to frost blend this. Okay. So instead of actually just drilling lines here and putting bubblers up in there, they want us to frost plug. They're really concerned about cooling in this area because it's visible or whatever. So we're going to use a feature in our water function. So I go to add and I go to my little fish here. This is our water. Um, I'm going to click on smart water. Okay? Now before I do that, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change my settings a little bit here. So I'm going to stay with 3.8's MPT, but instead of using a pipe tab, I'm going to make it put a pipe plug on the end instead. I'll show you why. And then I'm going to turn off the quick connect and I'm going to turn off the counter bar. So now what I can do is I can go ahead 
and I can place uh, I can place my water using the smart water. So I'm going to go in here, hit smart water, hit my core block, and I'm going to tell it to be a blind line, and I'm going to tell it to be right here. So now what it's doing is it's actually analyzing this block. So if I just to go and kind of look at it in like a top view here for you, right? And let's place a water line here for you so you can see. So what happens here is when I place this smart water is it's actually understanding features in the block. So you can see how it's stopping short at this height because it's seeing the it's right now I'm at currently at the same depth as my ejector guides and so it's kind of trying to stay away from those. It's not really letting me go into them. But then when I get above them, it's okay. Alright. So Smart water is very intelligent that way. It's looking for the components and it's looking for all these things. So, um, so okay, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go back into here, and I'm going to uh, place some smart water. So, the other plus about the smart water is the way it trims water for us. So, I'm going to go ahead and place my first water line. I'm going to go right here, and let's place it up here. Okay. So, you're going to see that bigger circle on the outside. I'm going to show you what that does there in a minute. I'm going to switch down to this view. See how the water line is at right length. It knew, it knew not to go through the other side because I told it to stay blind. And I'm going to place the line here. And then if I go to here, and let's place a line up here. Okay. So now when I go here, you can see I got these three lines I just placed, and they're all trimmed automatically. It understands where to trim those lines to and where to stop. So now what I can do is use my modify size button to click on this pipe tab. And I can actually turn off the pipe plug, switch to a connector, and add a counterpoint. So it's very easy to do all these things, and there's lots and lots of ways and lots of uh, situations that will work better in certain situations. And you can play with the different situations until you find the ones that work best for you, depending on the type of tooling you do. So here we can see we put a spot face in. That spot face was taken care of automatically for us. It understood that there's contour on this face, so we need to have a spot face. So put it in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to deepen it a bit because in this case we're not just spot facing, we're actually going to frost plug it. Okay. So I've gone a little deeper, now we can frost plug it. So now from there I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mirror copy, once again about a line, I'm going to mirror copy this vertical and this horizontal line. Okay. I'm going to mirror copy it about the center of that lifter rod. Since I know that center of the rod is on center. And there you go, I have a circuit. So we have another feature, it's called trimming, and so what I can do is I can click on a water line, use my water trimming, and I can trim the length of these water lines to whatever I want, so that's a little, a little shorter there obviously, and I can go a little longer. So it's very easy to change lengths of water lines as well. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to copy this water line to here, this whole circuit to here, and then I'm going to mirror copy this circuit over. So it's kind of symmetrical within this shape there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use the copy commands. Once again, these are the copy commands that we used in the, uh, in the previous tutorials. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose to copy everything that's by blue. So it's going to grab everything that's blue, and which is the water, and it's going to grab all the different components that are connected to it automatically. All right. And, um, and then I'm going to select the line that I want to mirror about. Right? So I'm going to turn off blue that because that line happens to be black. And now it's going to mirror it over. Very simple. Okay? So now I can do the same sort of thing. I want to copy from here to here, which is three inches away. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use my copy commands again. But I'm going to use copy many. And with copy many, what I can do is the same idea. I'm going to, I'm going to select by the color. And you remember in a previous tutorial, we talked about the variables. So at one gives me whatever that value was from here to here. So if you don't remember it, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it over. So just like that, I have my circuit. It's just that simple. So the one last thing I want to do is customers, we've sent this in for approval, and the customer says, oh, we really like the cavity water, it's perfect, the core water is really good. The only difference is, is I want this core water to be a circuit. I want it to be one big circuit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So if I come in right now, it's going to go in, over, up, down, up, down, and out. And that's exactly what they want. They want it to come in at operator side and go out on non-operator side. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our modify size button. We're going to click on the counter bore here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to remove the pipe tap and switch to a pipe plug and remove the connector and the counter bore all of type. And the reason why I said all of type is it's just easier for me to tell all of type, change them all so that they're all changed, and then just change the other two back to have a counter bore. So I'm going to remove the pipe tap, put the counter bore and the connector back on that one. And that's it. So I have them all changed. Now it's XMD is intelligent enough to know not to change the status of our cavity block. It knows that all of type, its, it's concern is going to be to change just what's in that core. So our cavity state, it still has all those connectors because we're keeping that style of circuit. So we go back to core block. See it? Okay. So now what we want to do is create a is create a circuit and, and connect some, some water lines. So the, so the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to get these here down to the same level. So let's move these ones up. Let's take all these ones and move them up to the same depth as here. Okay. So the easiest way to do that is going to be by windowing around them, moving them all up at the same time. So I need to go up that eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to tell it to move by many. I'm going to do a window around them all. And I'm going to move it up at, at one direction. And now they're all in the same line. Okay. So as you can see, it's very easy to manipulate and change the way you did things. If you didn't like the way you did it the first time, you can go ahead and change it. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. So we're going to go back into our smart water, we're click on the block, and we're going to place a water line right here. And we're going to go, we're going to place another water line on the other side over here. So now when I go to a plan view, you're going to see I've got a line coming from here and a line coming from here. So now if I use my water line trimming right here, and I take this water line and I trim it to this line, and I take this line and I trim it to this line. Okay. Now I have a circuit. So the only thing I have left is diverters. So let's go into 2D to do this, just to show it to you in 2D. And as you can see, all our water is complete in 2D, all at the same time, simultaneous, taken care of. We go to our water function and grab on our diverter function. And now what I can do is start placing diverters wherever they belong. So I need a diverter between here. And I need a diverter in between this set of lines. And I need, uh, so that's this, this, this. And I, need, I do not need a diverter there. I can actually trim this. So I'm going to trim this water line to here. Okay. And then I'm going to need a diverter down here, right here. And you need another diverter. Here. So now if I go into my 3D, if I turn on my 3D core blocks, they show components. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make some transparency here of the water so that you can see the diverters inside the water lines. See, they're all at the right depth. Even though I did them in 2D, it knew exactly what line they were, it was to tag them to all automatically. So just like that, I have a circuit. The circuit's complete. It's that easy in XD to take care of your water in 3D and 2D, all 100% complete, with bubblers, with fittings, done. And once again, as always, our materialist is complete at the same time. So we have our jiffy plugs in there, we have our pipe plugs in there, our baffle blades are in there, our converters are in there. It's all complete. Thank you. Have a good day.